in Physiology 1, Biology 2114, Images from the Lecture Notes Manual. As we've already mentioned, molecules are particles composed of two or more atoms or ions. And what links one atom or ion to another is a chemical bond, and we'll just refer to these as bonds. Let's look at some of the results. Remember, we just referred to figure 2.2 and looked at uh, several atoms and what they had to do to become stable. We mentioned that atoms may give electrons, like sodium giving an electron to become a sodium ion, or take electrons, and I left this out of your study guide, like chlorine to take an electron to become a chloride ion. Now, what does this have to do with the formation of a chemical bond? Well, it's pretty simple. Remember, opposite charges attract one another, and so what happens when you have sodium ions and chloride ions in solution? They attract one another, and this attraction is an ionic bond. And it forms a compound called an ionic compound. A common example is sodium chloride. And what's a common name for sodium chloride? Table salt. What about the carbon atom that shared electrons? Well, carbon forms a different kind of bond. It's called a covalent bond. Think of the word covalent. It refers to a tight attraction because of the shared electrons. It's almost like you have a strap or a belt around the nuclei of the two atoms. Let me give you an example. Remember, we said carbon has two electrons in its first energy level and four in the second energy level. And we said that carbon is not stable, so what carbon can do is share one of its electrons with the electron of another atom. Take, for example, hydrogen. This means that the outermost electron of carbon is shared with the electron of hydrogen, and part of the time the two electrons are traveling around the carbon nucleus, part of the time they're traveling around the hydrogen nucleus. This sharing of electrons is a covalent bond, and we designate that with a dash. Here's the carbon, there's the dash, and there's the hydrogen. Now, carbon can share its electrons with a variety of other things, other molecules. It can share its electrons with other carbons, and as a result, carbon can link to carbons to form an endless variety of different types of compounds. So, as you look through your textbook, you will see compounds listed like this. Carbon attached to carbons, attached to another carbon. Uh, the carbons may be attached to hydrogens. They may be attached to oxygens, and so forth. So you can end up with an awesome variety of compounds. And when we get to a later section of this unit, you'll see that these are called organic compounds. Now there is another thing. Uh, a carbon atom may share two of its electrons with another carbon. Uh, we call this a double bond. It might even share three, although that's not very common. Now remember, a carbon atom only has four outer electrons to share. Therefore, if this carbon forms a double bond with another carbon, and it forms a bond with this oxygen and a bond with this carbon, it's used up its outer electrons, so this bond would not exist. Now, as you practice with this, you'll see this is not really a very complicated idea.